God's word be spoken and only God's word be heard. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, God's living word. Amen. Good Shepherd Sunday. Like so many congregations in churches across particularly rural Ontario, you look to the front and see the image in glass of the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd is the focus of this fourth Sunday of Easter in every year of our lectionary cycle. And there is a reason, it seems to me, for that. Because it speaks clearly to the message of Easter, to the very idea that the Good Shepherd Jesus is with us and alive in us because we are the body of Christ. We bear Christ's image. We are the vehicles by which the grace and love of God becomes incarnate in this time and in this place. Well, one of the huge differences between living in small rural communities and cities really is the sense of who is my neighbor? Those of you who have had the joy of living in a big city apartment building may have people next door, but you may not indeed see them as neighbors. They might be antagonists. They might be people that uh, you say hello to, but you really don't want to become friendly with and you don't want to share your life with them. And that's part of what city life is about. In rural communities that I have lived in, everybody knows everybody, and you know your neighbors, and you say hello to them, and when they need help, you offer help. And if they want to borrow something, you loan it to them. And they are happy to come and ask, and you're happy to go and ask, or happy also to share. <clears throat> it's a different kind of community. And it seems to me that the image of the Good Shepherd needs to remind us that we live as Christians in such a community. And it may not be a community that's defined quite so clearly by space or location as rural communities are. But the message is the same, that those who are your neighbors in this community are also the sheep in this community and that sometimes you're the shepherd, sometimes you're a sheep, sometimes you might be neither, you might be just sheep to sheep uh, as neighbors. That's really I think important in a church community to remember that. That a church community is formed and shaped by relationship. And the relationship is rooted not, not entirely in location, although location is a factor, uh, because people don't often travel a hundred miles to worship with a, a community. So while space and distance are some factor, they're not the only factor determining what a church community is in our mobile time. So, today's Gospel reminds us of that pastoral, caring element that is to be a part of every Christian community. 
But I think also there's a very telling picture in this. And the gospel really makes it clear that in Middle Eastern communities, sheep were like dogs. They had names. They came when they were called. The shepherd walked in front of them. The shepherd led them. It's not our more Western picture of the shepherd with a crook following behind the herd with dogs, barking at them, keeping them going in a, a set direction. It, I think, makes the point, this gospel, that the shepherd is the leader, not the follower. That the shepherd may carry a crook, but it's not to beat the sheep into going in the right direction, but rather to haul them out of harm's way when they wander off the path they're being led down. And the image in this gospel is one of the shepherd walking in front and calling the sheep from before them to follow. Not one of the sheep being driven in front of the shepherd to get somewhere, whether it's to be sheared or to eat, or, or to, uh, in fact, become land chops. It's not that image. It's a much more personal image. It speaks of a relationship because the shepherd calls the sheep by name. Sometimes I think in the church we forget that. We somehow think that God calls us from history. God calls us from last week or last month or last year or last decade or last century or last millennium. Of course, the shepherd's in front, not behind, pushing you forward, but rather going in front, calling, calling for you to follow. Now, that's not always comfortable, <laughs> because when you're following into something in front of you and you don't know what's there, it could be a little intimidating, maybe even fearful, maybe because it's a little insecure, but indeed that's the message of the gospel. That's what this gospel today is about. It is about caring for one another because of relationship, of being able to call one another by name, of being able to, to minister to one another as shepherds, to be able to allow others to minister to you as sheep. But it's also about recognizing that God is leading and calling from the future. That's hard. Especially in a church tradition like ours where we pay so much respect to the way people used to dress and listen to the music that they used to sing and say words that they have always said and read from scriptures that we've always known. But those things aren't anchors to the past. They're lights that we've been given as we walk into the future. The scriptures are lamps. They're stories of people of faith who interacted with what for them was the present becoming the future. Every one of those stories in Scripture we might think of as times past, but the people to whom those things were happening were like us, living in a now that was quickly becoming tomorrow. 
And that's the lamp value of scriptures. They give us those stories of faith, those principles, those ideals, like the idea of the shepherd and the sheep, to lighten our way into what's next. It's so important, I think, for all of us to recognize in this gospel and indeed in the life of this parish at this time. The truth is, you're going forward into a future that you can't quite predict or that you may not know what it holds. And that may somehow make you feel uncertain. But you know what? That's no different than yesterday was giving way to today. It's the way things always are. The way things always have been. People walk from today towards tomorrow. Whatever challenges, changes, uh, new things that might mean. And you know, that's good. That's a great thing. That's God who says, Behold, I make all things new. Renewing. And hopefully renewing the life of this community of faith. As you move forward, hearing the call of the shepherd in front of you, Jesus calling you from tomorrow. God calling you from the future. Not simply to do what we've always done. Not simply to react to what's happening around us right now. But also to try and anticipate and understand where God is calling us to in the future. And you know, the church, the voice of the church, is needed moving into that future. The values that stand at the heart of the Christian faith are absolutely necessary if our civilization is going to continue in the kind of way that it has been evolving for the last two millennia. And yes, there have been blips and mistakes and unchristian things all along the way in the history of the world and in the interactions of governments and nations. But that doesn't mean that the values that lie at the core of the Christian faith have somehow been negated by that. That those values can be our response to what's going on around us. When you think about this parish, 180 plus years old now, when people first lived here, they traveled about in wagons, whether they were buggies or, or, or freight wagons, whatever they were, they moved around the world in wagons, drawn by horses. Somewhere around 100 years ago, People invented horseless wagons. And people have been moving around in ever more sophisticated horseless wagons since. Right now, I'm speaking with one of uh, a friend of mine who happens to own a car dealership in the area here, um, who attends things, uh, seminars and things at the, in Detroit at, headquarters points out that very shortly we're going to be in horseless carriages that don't have human drivers. That one of the challenges that's holding back the release of those vehicles into the wider world are ethical questions. You know, a human behind the wheel of a car 
given the choice of running into a transport truck facing them or running over 20 school children in front of them makes a moral choice. Makes a decision probably for what might be the greater good or looks desperately for some way out of that terrible choice. If the machine is programmed to protect its occupants, you can anticipate what will happen to the school children. If it's programmed <coughs> to protect the school children, you know what's going to happen to the vehicle and its passengers. But the third alternative of pulling off another road might not occur to a machine quite the same way it would to a human. Maybe it would. But the church's voice needs to be heard in that conversation. The values that we believe in need to be expressed or the world will move ahead without us and without the kinds of insights that we can bring. You know, that whole question about automobile revolves around the issue of the sanctity of life, really. And if you think about the legal changes that are coming into our society now with um, medically supervised death becoming a reality, the voice of the church, that institution that has always struggled in every condition, in every time, almost always, for the value and the sanctity of the individual, that in our baptism calls us and covenants us to see and to assist the Christ in other people, that voice needs to be heard in that conversation too. And those are only the things that are facing us right now. But the church's voice, the values of this flock, however large it is, not just this particular place, but in every place, needs to be heard. And those are challenges emerging today, but that will emerge even more exceptionally in the future. And then what's after that? What are the, the next set of challenges? Will the voice of our church, the calling of Jesus be expressed then? And so it seems to me this gospel today is a significant one for all of us to remember that we're called to follow God into the future, not to look for God in the past, to follow God into what's happening around us now and what's beginning to emerge in the world, not the world the way it used to be. I think there's a huge political, if you like, but it's global challenge happening in the world right now to deny internationalism, to, to become very nationalistic and very self-contained and uh, very self-centered as a nation in one way. Is that where God's calling us? Have we thought about it in terms of our Christian faith? Do we look at those different ideologies and say, do those values reflect those of Jesus or are they some other values? And what is our place in that context? And the church at least needs to be there to ask questions. Whatever the ideology, whatever the direction, whatever the challenge because we do have a set of core values 
that have altered the history of the world for the last two millennia. And those come from following the Good Shepherd. And we need, I think, today on this Good Shepherd Sunday to think about maybe finding ways to do that again. <laughs>